All right, so Mr. Noel G, I'm going to make it official. So if you don't count the couple of times you've been on the Super Bowl episodes, which I didn't do one this year, it's been, I was looking in, it's been about four years since you've been on the podcast. Oh, damn. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> it's been we a while, over, so. We, over, we expired milk, man. Come on, Doc. Switch that hey, up. It's nothing but cheese, you know what I mean? We molded uh, cheese at this point. <laughs> so you just got done doing Fuel Fest this last weekend. That nah, was good, man. It was off the hook. Uh, Cody Walker was there. The Diesel showed up, which uh, doesn't happen very often. So for him to come through and, you know, just kind of have a little heartfelt speech for the fans, that was awesome to see that. Um, I like hanging out with the fans. I like to see what they got to say, you know, what they think about the series and how it's going and, you know, coming along and what they're expecting for part 11. So just to be a part of that franchise is uh, – I mean, even to this day, sometimes I still am like, oh, you know what I mean? I'm still sitting here like, like, damn, man, like for me, for me to be a part of that, it's just, it's insane to me. You know, you only live once, do as much as you can, I say, but for me to be up in that mix of a franchise so big, uh, truly a blessing, man. It turned my whole life around and has helped me out tremendously in life. So I got to be real thankful for it. So that's why I like to go to Fuel Fest to connect with the fans get right there in the dirt with them and uh, meet them in person and let them know that I love them back as much as they love us. Can I, I'm going to share something with you. And, right. and, and so you've been coming out to this fuel fest. It's all right, dog. I mean, it's all love, man. You don't have to get emotional with me. It's so hot, bro. I swear dude. like my allergies are kicking up. I can't stand it, bro. I can't stand it. Oh man. Um, so, you know, you come out to this fuel fest out here in Arizona and I got to be honest with you, man, from the first one, I'm looking and, you know, the very first time your guys' tent is way down, right? And I'm seeing the people up on stage and I'm thinking to myself, why isn't Noel G there? And so it, it's really, it's, it's, it makes me happy to, to see you be more involved with the Fuel Fest because you're always there, you know, the L.A. one and this one at least. And I would argue, I mean... Sure, you've only been in a couple of the movies, but I mean, everybody. When you think of, when you think of a Fast and Furious, and you think of L.A., everybody, dude, you already know. For the car people, you're the number one Hector. I know you play Hector in all sorts of things. It's all about the 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 three spoon Honda Civics and stuff like that. And so, you know, it's it's it makes me happy to see you be more involved in their media and stuff like that, man. I mean, was there ever a time where you were wondering what's going on, or you know, what was going on with that? Uh. Yeah, I mean, you know, who wouldn't have thoughts? You know what I mean? Like, you think crazy and all over the place. But um, for me, I, I could get on the stage. You know, I know they would welcome me up, this, that, and the other. But I like to stay down low and chop it up, man. Uh, you know, it's funny. I'll be real with you. When I go on stage, you know, and again, I'm not I'm not Vin Diesel. I'm not Kevin Hart of the Rock. But when I um, am not on the stage, uh, some people, some will come up and start asking me a lot of questions about the movies because they know that's kind of the downtime because everyone's over there. So they're like, oh, now he's still over here. We can get that personal moment uh, more so, you know, because I'm not I'm not as bombarded as when nothing's really going on. So it's uh, kind of crazy just to hear some of the questions that they have about the Honda Civic. They're like, why did they pick you for the Honda? And I tell them that story. You know, why, why, why can't you pronounce your last name? And I tell them that story. <laughs> and why the three spoon engines? And I tell them that story. And I, you know, I share the behind the scenes that they don't know or get to know. So when they get those moments, man, just to see their face of like, oh, wow. And they get it. It's, uh, you know, it's a great feeling, man, to be able to share inside stuff, you know? So again, to be a part of that, to be able to share that inside stuff is, I, again, I'm still, you know, I'm still wowed by it. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, a lot of people identify with you or your character, and I mean, make no mistake, you have a hell of a stage presence. You know, I could easily see you up there rocking the mic, and you know, it's. Yeah. I hear what you're saying, though. You do, you know, you have this big presence, but you also kind of like to lay low and just chill. Because we've had an opportunity to to hang out a little bit over the past few years when you come you're out. You're my here boy. And, you're my boy. You're my people. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, man. You're my people too, man. Um, but what, that's so, how much I love you, man. I'm sick, and I still come on. The I mic. see that. <laughs> this is great, man. This, I'm going to turn this into a reel every time you wipe your face. Oh, my God, dude. dude I know. All right. It's going to go viral. Allergies kill me, bro. I cannot stand my allergies. They kill me, dude. 
But go ahead. I want to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, man. No, I like I like watching you struggle a little bit. Um, <laughs> you know, so a lot of stuff has happened since 2020. You know, and and I don't really go back to that that much. But you know, with the writer strike and and the actors strike and all that kind of stuff, and you've actually stayed busy. And you know, I've been able to keep tabs on you on social media. You know, whether you're doing your fun little side projects as far as your your skits. I don't know if anybody does more skits than you and has a lot of fun with it. And then when you do these these autograph signings, when you go to these all these different events, you know, how have you stay motivated through all those years? I don't know if you knew that things were really gonna turn around or were you just you just stay motivated. How'd you do that? Um, you know, the motivation, once again, is just the fans and being able to connect with the fans. That's what keeps me motivated. Like, like the Energizer Bunny, I just keep going until the day I can't, you know, um, doing events. And, you know, another part of it that really keeps me motivated is I just don't want to sit at home. Our job is very sketch because one day we're working and then one day we're not. And so, you know, I could either Netflix and chill or go do an event and hang with the people. I'd rather do an event and hang with people and have some fun. Of course, I got to get some me time in also as well. But because you got to find a, you know, it's a balance, you know, and you got to find that. But long story short, what keeps me motivated the most, to be real with you, is being able to meet people one on one. And, uh, you know, if I got to get 100 with it because you're just asking the question and I just got to be truthful with it is, um, you know, meeting people and being able to share the word of God and give them a gold little buggy here and there. So, but I, I never push it, you know, upon someone. It's just if that door opens up, then it opens up. If it doesn't, and it was up, that you doing good to meet you. Tell you the quick, fast, and very story later. Um, you know, again. So, but that's what keeps me uh, motivated because I just want to keep on going and going and going until until the day I can't move no more. It's it's funny. One time I was at a church, and uh, I remember I was sharing my testimony, and this guy was like 78, 79 years old, still up there preaching the word of God. And this is something that kept me motivated. And I remember when we were going to dinner after I asked his sons, I said, dude, your dad is like 78, 79 years old, man. I, I go, why doesn't he retire, bro? Like, why does he, you know, throw in the towel and pass it off to you guys or, you know, something like that. And I never forget the son's answer. He said, what you saw on stage, the anointing, he goes, you saw the Kobe Bryant of pastors. You saw the Kobe Bryant of preachers. And he goes, my dad will never stop until the day he is physically unable. And I and I was like, wow, man. And, I, and that just motivated me. Like, you know what? If you got no reason to stop moving, keep on going. <laughs> no, that's, that's and, great. But and, you, you've been mad. I mean, you stayed and whatever busy. It is you, and yeah. whatever it is you do, you know. And the way you stay busy, I tell people like this, is just be a person of integrity. You know, be someone who does what you say. When you're a man of your word, people just like you and they'll keep you busy. You know, that's that's uh, that's God's favor upon your life, you know, but just if you're just someone of integrity, people just want to do favors for you. And that's what will keep you busy all the time because people will know that you're reliable, accountable, that you'll always show up, that you'll be there when you say, you'll do what you say, et cetera, et cetera. So integrity is a big part of it, man. When you have integrity, You'll always stay busy 24 seven because people will remember that and want to be a you know part of that or have you be a part of whatever it is they're doing. So absolutely. I always tell people just, you know, be still I, I'm not a people pleaser, man. If I can't do something, I'll tell people straight out that right there, you might want to get someone else. That's not my cup of tea. That's not my lane. I don't know nothing about that there. But that over there, I could master that. That I could do. And I think they'll appreciate you more for what you're honest about and what you could do rather than trying to be one of those people who say you could do everything when you can only do some of everything. Now you're even worse than what you were because you're not able to do everything and now you messed up my program. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I just say, you know, be someone of integrity. And that's always something that will keep you busy moving and shaking and baking 24 7 because people will just remember that and they'll keep on calling you and rehiring you. At least that's the hope. Or, so at you're very, be, or at least you'll be highly recommended to someone else. So you're very unapologetic on your social media and very true to your faith. Uh, has that ever gotten you in any trouble? Because I, I, I look at that and I respect it so much because this guy is not afraid to be who he is. And I don't know if he's, I don't think you've ever been afraid to be who you are. I think we talked about that, you know, back when you were on the show last time. Yeah. I mean, you know, 
there's one thing that I always keep in mind, you know, Jesus, when he was walking with the disciples and they wanted to go minister the word of God with Jesus and the Jesus wanted to lead the disciples and town to town to town, city to city to city. One of the disciples that asked Jesus, he said, Jesus, and we're walking around and we're going here, there, 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 there. And we're getting farther from home. Where are we going to sleep? Where are we going to eat? You know, what are we going to eat? I never forget. Jesus said, he said, are you not a fool to know that God takes care of the birds in the air? And if he takes care of the birds in the air, he will more so take care of you. Meaning that people are more important than birds in the air. So what God was saying is, if he takes care of a bird, don't trip. He's definitely going to take care of you, a human being. So he's like, we're just going to live off of the ge generosity of others. Don't worry about where we sleep. Don't worry about where we eat. We're going to eat and we're going to sleep and we're going to be okay. Let's just keep on moving. So my whole point in saying that is I'm ready to go homeless. I really don't care what I lose, man, for the word of God. Because at the end of the day, we're going to be pushed back into a wall where you're going to have to choose God or the devil. And if you're still teeter-totter in between and you haven't made that choice there, one day you're going to be forced into that choice. And, uh, you know, I'd rather pick God because there's so many things I could say about this. But my whole point to wrap it up is just to say this. I really don't care if I go homeless for spreading the word of God or become, you know, whatever. Because I know that if God takes care of bird in the air, you got my back. He's going to take care of me and I'll be all right, however, whichever way it happens. But I just got to trust God in my journey. So that's why I don't care. And I'll spread the word of God. And if I lose what I lose in it because of it, so be it. It will be what it is. Because at the end of the day, I know I'll have heaven over earth. And whoever wants earth can have earth because I'd rather be in heaven. <laughs> well said. Um, I had something for you. Oh. This morning you were talking at a high school and you and you do that a lot. You know, why do you keep doing that? Why is that so important to you? Because, you know, God even talks about think childlike. God himself says, ask questions. I always tell people that the stupidest question is the one you don't ask. And right now what's being attacked, you know, is our youth. Because if you could get them when they're young, you could get them when they're old. Or you already have them when they're old. I'm sorry, let me repeat that. When you get them when they're young, you already have them when they're old. Uh, let me give you a perfect example. My friend, he packages, he owns a packaging company. He packages uh, Pringles, Energizer batteries, uh, uh, string cheese, uh, milk. Uh, you probably have some stuff in your kitchen. Uh, toilet paper, paper towel. He has a packaging company. He's a billionaire. And one of the things that he packages the most also as well is cornflakes. And the reason why he keeps Tony the Tiger on the box is because he says it's an attractive looking box. It attracts mm -hmm. kids. And so when the kids get that box of cereal, it don't matter what the box looks like when you're older, you're going to go back to the cereal you like, regardless of how the box looks like. So my whole point, you got to you got to instill in these kids. You got to get them when they're kids, man, before, uh, you know, because if you don't get them when they're kids, their mind gets distorted. And then when they're older, they're all messed up. And it's harder to get someone older than younger. Because when you have people that are older, sometimes they get into that I know it all attitude or whatever have you. So I like to attack the kids and get into the kids and get into the youth so they at least have that seed planted before the bad seed gets planted. How long have you been doing that with the kids? Uh, over 20, over 23 years. Okay, over, so uh, my follow-up question it, it is. started in 2000, 2001. You just made me feel old. Um, so over Moistra. that course, you've seen a lot of people. You've seen a lot of, you've gone to a lot of schools. Have the kids changed? Oh, 100%. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, and one day, one time I did a, uh, I did a kindergarten to third grade. And then I did another school that was sixth and seventh grade. And then I did a high school all in one day. And I never forget that day because I was, when I, when I talked to the kindergartens and the third graders in between, they were all like hopeful and wishful and thankful. Mm. And I could be a doctor and I can own a business and I can write a book and I can be a sports athlete and I can do it. 
And I said, if you guys can do it, run up front right now. And all the little kids rushed the stage and just all of them just ran at me. I did the same exact speech, the same exact way at a sixth and seventh, uh, seventh and eighth grade, sixth through eighth grade, same exact speech, same exact way. And some of the kids were like, yeah, I could do it. And some of the kids were like, nah, I can't. I can't do it no more. It's not going to happen for me. And then when I did high school, you really felt mm. same exact to me, same exact way, the presence of I'm already a failure. And not all of them, but I'm saying there was more of that than more than I'm a winner. So the point that I'm making is like, you know, we were meant to dream big. And when you're a kid, you wanted to be a superhero. You wanted to be Superman or Batman or Thor, whoever you're Spider-Man or whatever it was, because that hero is inside of you. But as you grow up, you start getting all these different opinions put in. You get music put into you. You get social media put into you. Your friends' opinions put into you. You get everyone else's opinion into you except God's word. And when you start detouring from God's word, you start losing a little bit of that heroic attitude. Because now you start hearing things like, nah, you ain't going to make it. Nah, you're tripping. Nah, it ain't going to happen for you. Nah, that's too tough to happen. And all these things, and that hero slowly gets taken out of you. And that's why I have such a passion for kids, because you got to get them when they're young and let them know that you can still be a hero if you want to be. You just can't let everybody else get into you. You got to keep God's word hero inside of you to be that hero that you're meant to be, that you wanted to be, you could still be. But you detoured and you sidetracked and you got off of God's word. You weren't laser focused on God and God only. And that's not why your thinking is all over the place than where it should have been to begin with, where it should have stayed where it was once at. And that's why redemption, redemption demonstrated is this. Redemption is something that was once in place, taken out of place, and put back into its proper place. And that's what it is. So when you're born, you're put into place. You're born right where you're supposed to be. But once you start growing up, you start getting music put in you, movies put in you, your friends' opinions put into you, social media put into you, drinks put into you, drugs put into you. Now you're all over the place. And what God wants to do is get a hold of you and put you right back into your proper place where you were meant and supposed to be and should be. And that's what redemption is. And that's why you have to allow yourself to be redeemed. You have to allow yourself to let your mind be renewed, be refreshed. God changes the way you think, the way you talk, um, your actions that you do, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why God says be reborn again in the flesh. Because what God's talking about is when you're born and you get all out of place, God wants you to get a hold of you, put you back into your place. He wants you to be reborn again, to relearn again, so you can go straight up the way God is meant and intended for you to go with the beat. Makes sense? Makes perfect sense. I was watching one well, of your one interviews because of- I, yeah, I, I, I creep on you on social media sometimes. So I was watching one of your, um, one of your, your stage things, I think on YouTube, and you'd ask the crowd for a volunteer and nobody wanted to get up. One woman, one girl, I want to say it was a girl, came up on stage and you rewarded her for that. And the lesson that you were telling everybody was don't, what, what was the lesson? You remember that lesson? It was take chance, take risk in life, because sometimes you can have opportunity right in front of your face. And if you don't take it when it's there, you messed your opportunity. And now Mm. you just, it doesn't mean that your dream still can't happen. Let's be clear about that. It just means that you prolonged your dream. And now you got to wait longer or you got to wait for your next opportunity. Whenever you see it right in front of you, sometimes God puts stuff right in front of you. But sometimes because you don't have the eyes of God and the word of God, the wisdom of God. God says to use wisdom and strategy. God himself says that. Use wisdom and strategy. And if you don't know God to know his word, to know what he's advising you to do, and that then in their moments, you're going to mess a lot of great opportunities. Now, once again, to be clear, it does not mean that God will not provide other opportunities for you ahead. All I'm saying is that you made your dream longer than it was supposed to be. Every dream can become a reality. 
but you're going to have to fight for that dream to become reality. So the lesson in that was take risks, take chances. I worked in a convalescent home when I was 20 something years old. And I never forget when I was in this convalescent home, they asked everybody over 65 years old, if you could go back and change something different about your life, what would you have done differently? Over 83% said they would have took more risks and more challenges in their life because now they're 65 and older wondering, could have I been that doctor? Could have mm. I wrote that book? Could have I owned that business? Could have I been that sports athlete I wanted to be? Et cetera, et cetera. So the risk, the the thing that I tell people is you got to take risks. You got to take challenges, man. Like you got to be bold. You got to be courageous. You got to walk in your confidence. You got to walk in your birthrights. You got to walk in authority and you got to let people know, you know, what time it is. The stupidest question is the one you don't ask. That's why you got leaders and advisors to people there to help you. And if you see someone who's in it, ask them, hey, how did you get to where you're at? I'm not asking for a handout. I'm not asking for this, that, and the other. I'm not even asking for a paycheck. All I'm asking for is some advice. Any advice to push me in the right direction. Can you do that at least? And if that one says no, don't worry about it. There's 10 other doctors or lawyers or whatever your profession is that you want to be. They're there to give you advice. You know what I mean? And that's that's how you do it. I appreciate that. That was that was great. Let's shift a little bit here. So Cash Out, in the last, I don't know, a few weeks, right? Or last couple of months, you had a movie Cash Out. Yeah, the with, month. With the month. Month, yep. Um, what are the projects you're working on? And- What's going on in that world? So I just did cash out with uh, John Travolta, Wave of Migos Man, and Kristen uh, Davis, I think is her name, from Sex in the City. Uh, just came out a month ago, so if you get a chance, check that out. Rent cashed out, cashed me out. <laughs> I, know, I, had, I had to do it. And uh, long story short, man, I'm working on a um, I'm working on a documentary that I'm putting together with Michael Francis, one of the last mafia members alive to this day, 73 mm. years old. Um, he's right there with the Gotti family and all that, man. He was one of the top seven uh, mob bosses of the seven families and one of the last mafia members alive to this day. Uh, doing a documentary with him, it's going to be powerful. And then I got um, also a TV show that I just did with Charlie Sheen uh, called uh, The Bookie. Uh, season two i'm up in that on netflix and then i got um a movie coming out with my boy ryan achoa and okay. some other the i did called second chances that's going to be in there so there's a lot of stuff that that's dropping and then i just did another movie with um amy garcia and the guy from spider-man with the four arms i forget his name um uh, but yeah so i i got some stuff dropping and coming out soon just kind of, you know, stay busy, stay grinding. Got some stuff that's pending, but I never like to speak on that stuff until it's concrete. Right. But um, I've been very blessed, man, to, you know, the phone keeps ringing. And my, my manager made a joke. He said, when they stop calling you, that's when you got to worry. Right now, they're still calling. So thank God. <sighs> What's left on your list? Like, what are some things that you still want to do that you haven't done yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, no, I, I, uh, I got a lot of, you know... I got my hands on a lot of cookie jars that I want to mess with and, and do or whatever. But, you know, my main goal now, is, and I'm not perfect in any way, shape or form. I still mess up to this day. I want to be very clear about that. Um, you know, I got some personal issues myself. Uh, I had a divorce in 2015. It's, it's not mm. as hard as it was back then, but sometimes it still tears at me a little bit. Not that that's an excuse because, you cannot rationalize or justify sin with God. But all I'm saying is that, um, you know, I, I do have my ups and downs like anybody else. We all go through personal things, but I, I don't claim perfect in any way, shape, or form. But I say all that to say this. I say that to say that my main ultimate goal is to get back where I was at uh, with God 1,000 million percent and uh, just minister the word of God to people. And let God know that, let, let the world know that God is real, that God wants a relationship with you. He wants to engage with you. He wants to spend time with you. Um, he wants to be a part of your choices. He wants to be a part of your decisions. But the only way he can do that is if you let him in, is if you give him your time. And if you give him your time, he's going to give you his time. It's really that simple. God himself is the most gangster dude who ever walked the earth. God himself said, if you reject me, I'll reject you in the kingdom of heaven. And I don't fear nothing in this world. I don't fear a damn thing in this world. I do not care. I don't fear a damn thing in this world. There's only two things that I do fear in my whole life only, period. 
standing before God and he says these four words to me. I don't know you. That's mm-hmm. one thing that I fear. And the second thing that I fear is hell. Mm-hmm. Because hell is an eternity. You burn forever. It does not stop. An eternity. An eternity. You're not going to burn for like five years and say, I'm used to it now. An <laughs> eternity. Yeah. You're going to burn forever and ever and ever and ever. And it does not stop. Think about that. That's the fear. See, people mislead and misguide when they say fear of God. It's not in the fear of God. If God loves you so much and wants to do so many things, but he gives you free will for you to decide whether or not you want to be a part of him or not. It's the fear of what can happen to you if you reject him and don't serve God. That's how the fear is meant. Because God loves you so much, he's not going to force you to do anything. Because if he forces you, it wouldn't be real. Well, he's not going to force you to love him. He's not going to force you to choose him. He's not going to force anything upon you. Because if he forces you, it would not be real. What he is going to do, though, is he's going to give you free will. He's going to let you know that he's there for you. And he's going to wait for you. But if you don't make that decision the day before you die, I'm telling you straight up, straight out, off to hell you'll go. You will go downstairs instead of upstairs. That's why God says, be ready in season and out of season. You know, there was a guy just Mm -hmm. today on TMZ just today that um, stood at the side of the road on the, on the side of the, the road, a, a red light. I don't know if you saw this, but he was just shooting people. Oh my he God. Was just, no. Yeah. He was just, I'm going to, I'm going to forward it to you on your Instagram. He was just shooting people as they were driving by. Dude, you don't know when you're going to go. Someone could just decide to light your house on fire. You could have been someone at that red light. This guy just goes berserk, mm. steps out of the car and just starts shooting people for no reason. Like what just happened today at TMZ, people are starting to go nuts. They're starting to go crazy. So, I mean, you don't know who wants to take their life and take you with them. You don't know. And that's why the Bible says you're ready in season and out of season. A lot of people say, I'm not ready to serve God. You'll never be ready to serve God. You just got to start. And as you start, you will get better and better and better at serving God. You understand what I'm saying? And so that's why I tell people, I just go on a little tangent because that's how much I love you and I care about you. God gives you free will to make that choice yourself. But if you don't end up making that choice yourself, like I said, God said it very plain and simply and most gangster dude ever. You reject me, I'll reject you. He kept it that simple. So he doesn't force you to love him. And, you know, I don't want to kick a dead horse, but I'm telling you guys because I love you guys, man. And so what do I want to do with my life? I yep. want to let people know that God is real. You got to wake up. People got to get into this relationship with God because if you think, you know, you have another day and, and God hopes that God you do, but you don't know every day in your life is a risk. Every day in your life is a chance. You don't know if that's the day you're going to go. You don't know if you're going to get in the car on the freeway if someone smashes it. You don't know. There's people who die who sit in their cars and the tree falls on top of them. Look that up on, you know, look that up. That has happened before. They don't know when you're going to go or what. So I'm telling you, that's why the Bible says be ready in season and out of season. You guys have to stop playing with the grace of God because you don't know when you're going to go and you don't know how much grace God's going to give you in life. And so if you get in a car accident and say, for example, you're tumbling, you're not going to be like, I, God, forgive me. And I accept Jesus Christ, the father. You're just going to hold on. like, ah! and, and if you die when the car stopped and you didn't repent before that at any time before that and you lived your whole life, we're saying, now I'll serve God later. I'll serve God later. I don't mm. know if you're going to take it to heaven or not. That's not a gamble I want to take in my life. And so that's what I want to do with my life, bro. I want to push people to God because I know God is real. And I'm telling people straight up, straight out, the way this world's going. I, I mean, if you, if, if you see what's going on in the world today and you still don't believe in God, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't know what to tell you. This is all in the Bible. Everything that's happening today is the Bible, the chip, the one world government, you know, everything. God said to the devil, you can have the world. You can have it. He gave, he gave the devil the world to control. What does the devil wants to do? He wants to control you. That's what the devil wants is control. Don't be manipulated by the chip. That's the mark of the beast. All, if you don't comply with the government, all they got to do is turn that chip off. That's all they got to do. And you won't even be able to buy a cheeseburger. 
You'll, you'll be at the government's mercy until you comply and do what they tell you it is to do. I can go on and on, but people, you got to wake up. And I say that respectfully. I say it in tough love. I say it as a, as a brother, as a father, whatever figure you want to look at me. But I say it because I actually honestly do care. And I, I fear for everyone's life who does not decide to serve uh, God or let him inside your heart or get into that relationship with them. Because if you don't, like I said, I'm going to end with this. If you reject him, he'll reject you. I can't say it any other way. There's so much more to be said on that. But remember, the Bible is 5,000 plus pages. You ain't going to learn all of God in a day. Nope. You got to get into a relationship with them. You know what I mean? So spend some intimate time with God and find out what it is that he's really trying to tell you what your life to do. Let him guide you. Let him be a part of your choices. Let his word get into you. And I promise you, you'll be better in the fight with God on your side than in the fight without God on your side. Speaking of God, have you seen the book of Clarence? No. I haven't seen that one yet. No, what's that? I watched Don't it on the plane. I watched it on the plane. It was actually catch up on it. Yeah, it was it was I thought it was pretty brilliant. Yeah. Okay. DM me that, bro. Yeah, the book of Clarence. It's 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 a it's a fun take, uh, but serious on Jesus and the twelve disciples. Okay, cool. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Um, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, my thing, bro. Sorry to go on a tangent, bro, but it's all right, I man. I know you. Yeah, I just, I know, I know. I went off, but sorry. But I just tell people, like, I just love you, people, man. And I just, uh, you know, I want nothing but the best for you, and and God can give you the best. I'll leave it at that. I don't want to go. One on last another, question for you. I don't want to go on another tangent. <laughs> go ahead. When are we gonna get the slow and the curious? <laughs> That's when I'm old, bro. You go catch me in a wheelchair, dog. It's gonna start off with a walker and then a wheelchair. I'll put a little motor on that thing. I'll do about 25 miles per hour. And then you'll get the slow of the curious. Now, I'm already getting old. I'm climbing. It's already happening, bro. So I I you know it's funny, man. One thing you learn when you get older is patience. Mm -hmm. I just I I do everything real slow now. Not like slow like that. I'm not like old old. I'm just saying I, I really take my time now with things. I'm not in a rush as much as I used to be. Uh, I just, you know, I've, I've learned a lot more patience and that's one thing that I, you know, I'm still struggling with patience, but I've been better at. No, well, gee, I appreciate it. I'll let your old sick allergy butt go. I appreciate you taking the time. We'll catch yeah. up. Are you coming out here for uh fuel fest? Yeah, I'll be there in December, man. So we'll hang out most definitely, man. You know, uh, keep on supporting my dude right here. Uh, keep on watching his podcast, man. This guy is bringing truth life to you guys letting you guys know what it is and uh i've been knowing him for how long have i known you bro like it's a bit it's been five years work. yeah it's been about five years right yeah and uh been a solid dude since day one man comes out to support helps and he does that on his free time when he doesn't even have to and when those are the type of cats you have in your life those are the ones you want to hold on to keep so i want to thank you brother for having me on and uh thank you for letting me have some of the freedom to say some of the stuff i say on here and I just, uh, you know, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you 100%. Uh, continue following this guy's podcast, man. As for myself, much love. If you want to keep up with me, see some more stuff, follow me on my Instagram, actor Noel T. And I always say my last words. I always say God first and the rest will work itself out. Much love. Much love, man. Appreciate you. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Noel G. You can follow him on Instagram at Noel G. If you like what you heard today, please hit the like button. Tell me what you thought of the interview down below. If you want to pick up some hard parking gear, you can go to hardparkingpod.com. At some point, I'm going to have that merchandise available here on this channel. To hear the rest of the episode, make sure you check out the playlist of the podcast here on my channel as well. Or you can stream it from any of your normal podcast providers. And I will see you guys next time.